We are here on another episode of Data Fader Warren Vintage. We are in Trinity Groves right now, about a mile right outside of central downtown Dallas. We have a privilege here today uh, doing an interview with John John here at Human Dior. And uh, yeah, so this is John John Human Dior right here. And uh, he has one of the dopest shops here in Dallas. If you're watching this, no matter where you're watching this from, uh, when you come to downtown Dallas, if you're gonna be in the area, this place is a must stop. There's stuff here for every one possible that's out there. So let's just get straight into it and let's get to know him a little bit more and some of the things he pick uh, and choose. Um, and let's get right into it. John, John, what, uh, let the people know like where you from and um, what got you actually into this position right here? I'm from Dallas, actually born and raised in the same uh, neighborhood right here. Oak Cliff, like it's like Oak Cliff, Trinity Grove is like a newer name to West Dallas, but downtown, pretty central. I grew up here in central Dallas. I've been, I mean, reselling for as long as I can remember since like, I would say, I don't know, like high school, you know, when sneakers were popping, SBs and stuff, like it's all I cared about was like sneakers at first and then it turned into like, you know, clothes towards the end. But I mean, I remember being in high school my friends would have like, $200 nudie jeans. I'm like, fuck no, dude. I'm never buying no $200 jeans ever in my life. That's retarded. And like, here I am, like, buying designer stuff. But um, it really it really caught on when I was going back and forth to Austin uh, for South by Southwest. I would go over there and uh, just, I was just shopping around, seeing clothes, finding pictures of clothes. And at the time, uh, what, like 2012, 2013, 2012, like, 2013, Rock okay. T started getting popular again. And I was in Austin. I would find a couple dope ones. I was thrifting too at the time. So I would just buy, like, I would thrift, find some stuff that didn't fit me, and I'd still buy it, and I'd take it back to my, I was living with my grandma at the time, just to like, I would keep, I would always keep other people in mind, like, damn, this don't fit me, but it'll probably fit like my friend Michael. Somebody else, Or yeah. like my friend Skyler, and like, it, it'll fit them, and like, they always need clothes too, so like, right. I'll buy it for five, 10 bucks, I'll sell them to for 10, I mean for 15, 20 bucks, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, kind of started like that, a little hustling clothes like that, and then the rock, I came up on a bunch of rock tees going to Austin, actually, uh, Child Vagabond. They Shout have out to Vagabond. Vagabond. They have a store in uh, what's the other one? San Marcos. So that was the first time I went to Vagabond, San Marcos, and I came up on some 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 fire stuff. ACDC like Marilyn Manson tees for like 35, 40 bucks. Like when it wasn't that popping, you know. So right, right. I was able to come back and flip those for like 60 bucks, you know, 50, 60. So that was like my first time selling stuff for like getting 25 on top, 40 right. bucks on top, you know. I was damn sick. And what, a, what around time was this when you actually noticed that you had enough to like just say, forget it, I'm finna, I'm finna open up a store, I'm finna open up a shop. Uh, uh, what, what around time was that? That was around 2015. 2015, So okay. I started doing this like 2013, like the, the clothing stuff, and then 2015 I'd say it started picking up. Right. I actually had another, I had a, me and my cousin when I lived with him in UTA, uh, around 2012, we started this thing called J and J's Collection. It's Jonathan okay. and Jeremy. Right. We, it was a bunch of like st thrifted stuff. We had hella rare polo stuff, bro, that we let go for the low. That we didn't even know. We just like found it all out there and just like, let it go. But people weren't buying it. I had to like basically liquidate all that shit. That was 2012, and then uh, around 2015, living with my grandma still, having like a rack of clothes and. I've started to realize like I needed my own store when people would hit me up like yo like I have a party or I'm trying to go out this weekend like can I come shop like your little your little rack of clothes right. I was like, yeah that's cool you know that's come really on, dope you know? yeah. so from there like just smoking on the back of my grandma's porch like just plotting up I was right. like talking to him I was like bro I think I need to open up a store yeah yeah and he was already building that rep like you said through high school and outside of that mm -hmm. outside of uh, selling clothes uh, where what were you uh, interested in at that time exactly too uh, or was clothes just picking with number one hobby no uh i was into obviously like rock tees i grew up mm -hmm. listening to like alternative grunge music from my parents and just like old school like r&b stuff right okay um and i was into i was making clothes at the time actually i wanted to make my own clothes but everyone was making t-shirts i was like i'm gonna try something different so i actually started making jewelry so i had a jewelry company called the essentials for like a year and a half and that got it was pretty expensive i had a little money to invest but then once i like hit that like mark i was like wow like this is not easy. That was my first venture too, so I ordered way too much product. Didn't sell anything damn near. We live and we learn. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And uh, so uh, f that's what I was doing first, jewelry, and then it came, it came into the clothing. The clothing. But a Human Dior wasn't a shop, it was a brand. Right. It was okay. a brand, so I was dropping clothes, uh, graphics and stuff. At the same time when I was collecting clothes and then it, the, the clothing, the resale just kind of took it over because that's where all the money was coming from because no one was buying Human Dior merch. Right. Like at all, I was giving that shit away. 
Okay. But now, like, it's, it's flying. And uh, I gotta say, when I first moved here to Dallas, uh, I heard about you from a friend of mine, uh, Morgan. So shout out oh, to yeah, Morgan. Oh Morgan, she's uh, a, she's an awesome chick. Bro. Yeah, she's, cool. she's really cool. Hey, your friends. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, she she's real cool. She uh, stayed dripping. She was yeah. staying dripping in high school. First off, same thing. She started with sneakers. Yeah, yeah. She started okay. With sneakers too. I think we all kind of did. Right, right. She was with uh, Blue and them Uncommon Color. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Sugar friend, yeah. Okay. And um, so now we are here in Human Dior, and um, when, when when did you first open up your shop? I've been here for uh, going on two years now. In, in January, it'll be two yep. years, so it's September right now. Okay, and when and when I tell you guys that like this place is a must stop in Dallas, I mean, we're here definitely for the vintage scene, and this man definitely carries that. But also, a lot of Japanese brands and uh, actually like designer uh, yeah. vintage. How did that play? into building out the shop too as well or which came first uh i would say i, I, I would say designer came in first okay um, but then japanese came like right after pretty much it kind of hand in hand i started buying like the designer japanese while i was living in my grandma's house okay and uh shout out craig my homie craig sarmiento he's the one that kind of put me on to like kind of like japanese stuff like okay. designer stuff he had like all the grill pieces like back then in 2012 like he already had them where where can people find you when they do come into town well, nobody knows this. They always ask us, but since I've moved to the spot, we've been on Google forever. So okay, so just Google, Google Human Dior in Dallas, like showroom, whatever. It'll pop up. People always ask for that. Just like, I mean, it's, sure. just, it's like on Google. That's it's been on Google. The spot. Okay. Yeah, right. it's on Google. No one, no one, no one knows, but they can just just real simple search. Right. Even right. on yeah, regular Google or the maps, like it'll pop up. Okay. And I've uh, on the uh, Japanese talk I have come in here, and I've bought uh, bait here myself. Uh, the tea I'm actually wearing right now. Right, yeah. I was on the rack right over there. Uh -huh. at the new fucking arrivals uh, yeah. rack. So, <laughs> so that's that's here at Human Dior. Uh, this is John John. We're going to uh, show off the shop a little bit and get into some of his favorite pieces. Go, please. <laughs> we're gonna get to the next segment into this episode where we get to know John's taste into uh, maybe some of the things that means a lot to him and maybe why he still has it whatever it may be this is his data faded worn pieces and uh, let's just get right into it man Word, okay uh, this is my first piece I've actually had this shirt a couple times I love Pantera you know they're from Arlington Texas mm -hmm. so hometown heroes in my eyes um, you know a couple of the members have died Dimebag Daryl got killed on stage Oklahoma, I think, and then uh, his brother Pauly, he just passed away recently. And it's cool; they had a strip club and like everything called everything. Playhouse. Uh -huh. Playhouse, that was fire. I wish I was old enough to go to that during the, during the time. But it's I've had this tea twice man. before. Uh, I got one. The first one I bought is actually in Japan, or like I got it off auction in Japan. And uh, I cut the sleeves. That wasn't like no collars and sleeve cutting was cool. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like I cut it too short. So I only wore it a few times. I was actually able to get another one. This is actually a better nice. one. Yeah. And it just reminds me of like, it kind of reminds me of Terminator for some reason. Like something like John Connor would wear. I feel like he was, I think he was wearing a public enemy shirt. But right, like, right. It was like the weed and like the Pantera with the metal like 
letters and then the screw in the world. Yeah, this is a dope piece. I do like that colorway on the back. Mm -hmm. I'm loving that green. They have some with dates too, but I just like, oh, like, I like this one. It's my favorite. I've had it like a second time. Okay. Second right. time around. This piece is dope. This Ooh. is actually a, a custom from a guy, uh, Adam and Even, on Instagram. He's been doing his thing for many years. Um, so this is the second piece I bought from him, actually. Um, he's he's kind of blowing up now. He makes all types of pieces like for a while shit would sit, but now every time I hit him up, it's like sold. He used to be able to give me discounts yeah. like not no more, bro, because he already knows he's gonna get two fifty for these shirts. But yeah, I remember, looks like I think I bought four. this for like one sixty okay. at the time. Like he used to try to like one twenty five for like a shirt, and he went up. Now they're all like two fifty. But yeah, it's it's two shirts. This is Bjork and Charles Manson, mm -hmm. and then if you see here, it has a little Tupac rap tee on it. Right. And I've always wanted this shirt, like. I, this is one of the shirts that I like the back of, but the front's like whack. I kind of don't like that front that you bought. But when I saw it, I was like, this is one of the favorite pieces of the shirt. So I wonder if Heaven got a ghetto. Right. So when I seen it, I was like, bro, like, I need that. that so the, piece, um, yeah. the back, it has like kind of like the Charlie, Charles Manson like shit. Okay. And this is before he was even surging and stuff. So this is like put together to kind of like regularly. But now he has like a better production team. But Adam and even uh, my homie Justin. Okay. From New York. Justin, yeah. yeah, from New York. That's that's just a unique piece. It and is, like yeah. I thought it was crazy that he was selling it for so cheap, like one sixty, because it has a rap tee in it. Like he had to destroy right, a rap right, tee just like to right. make the shirt. Like that's pretty crazy to me. Yeah, man. I mean that was a good I mean it wasn't dry rot. No, I mean it was a good, good, it was a good one. one. So I thought that was kinda of crazy. And that's why yeah. I bought it too, you know. That's so, dope, man. Yes, cool, sir. cool. And this is my last one. Actually it's one of my favorite fucking shirts of all time. I love long sleeves like so much. And the fade is perfect. It's just like a beautiful shirt to design. I got this in Australia, in Adelaide actually. It's Adelaide. Fringe is a Australian festival they've been having forever. Almost like, uh, what's the one here? Uh, 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 Lollapalooza. Oh, like Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza okay. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so they've been around for a long time. And this is hanging up in a venue. It had a bunch of shirts from bands that came like all over. They had like some Nirvana shit, some meat puppet stuff. Ooh, like, wow. some old stuff hanging up. And I was running the merch and it was sitting, it was like right above me. And I was like, bro, I like, I could not keep my eyes off this shirt. And I was right. like, dude, the graphic, like the brown with the red, <laughs> I mean, the gray with the red yeah. with the faded. And then the arm. I mean, arm it feels hits. good too. I mean, it feels amazing. What, I mean. And then the arm, like with the, and just something you don't see, like right. the star with the heart. Like I love heart and star logos. Like that's my shit. So yeah. like, I love this shirt, like how much for this shirt. So I went up to the, the owner of the shop and I was like, hey, like, I'm like, I cannot keep my eyes off this shirt. Like, what is it? Like, I thought it was a Rage Against the Machine shirt at first for some reason. But I was like, what is it? How much is it? And she's like, what, that, that old shirt right there? I was like, yeah. She's like, oh yeah, go go get it down. She told her daughter to go get it down. She got it down. She's like, this is like a festival like shirt from 94. She was like, yeah, this is like a big festival we have here in Australia. I was like, was this for sale? She's like, I mean, no. She's like, you can just have it. <laughs> wow. So she gave it to me. She gave me this shirt. I was like, are you wow. serious? I was like, I'll give you like 60 bucks. Like, she said, no, just take it. She's like, I think we have a double. Th I think we have another one at home. She's all like, right. but take it real quick before my husband sees. Because he was right. in there too. I was like, all right, don't you tell me twice. I was like, never so hurts much. to ask. <laughs> yeah, never hurts to ask, bro. I was like, so like amazed that she gave me this shirt. And I loved it. I wore it for days after. It's, a, uh, it's just a beautiful shirt to me. It's probably not worth like too much of anything to anybody. But to me, it's like, just, it's like kind of priceless shirt. We got tacos. 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 Yeah. Well, dope, man. Uh, that's dope <laughs> to know uh, the, the the things that you choose from and exactly how you got some of these pieces, especially uh -huh. our custom. I do got to say, um, shout out to the boy Justin, and me. Yeah, Justin, Adam and Even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Adam and Even. So um, this is John John. This is Human Dior, Trinity Grove. Anything less? Uh, where, where can you, they can follow you. Yeah, uh, my Instagram, johnjohn.h or just Human Dior. You can find all my pages from one of those two. Bet, bet. Until another episode, shout out to John John, shout out to Human Dior, Trinity Groves, Dallas, Texas, Oak the Cliff. Vintage Train Station. Oak yeah. Cliff. Shout out Oak Cliff. Bet. Peace. Peace.